welcome to a, another interview for Unitas Fide. Uh, this time we're pleased to welcome Dr. Kenneth Minkema. He's the executive editor of the works of Jonathan Edwards, and he's a leading director of the Jonathan Edwards Center and online archive at Yale University. Dr. Minkema has also edited numerous volumes and written many journal articles on Edwards and early American religious history, including the book we will be discussing today, the Jonathan Edwards Encyclopedia, huh, which he co-edited yeah, with uh, Dr. Harry Stout and Adrian C. Neal. Dr. Minkema, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became interested in Jonathan Edwards and the Puritans? Um, I, I grew up in the, um, the Dutch Reformed tradition. Um, so uh, Calvinism was kind of my, uh, I don't know, I was, you know, suckled and cradled and all that stuff in the, in the uh, bosom of Calvin, I suppose, in many ways. Um, <laughs> you know, attended a parochial school my whole time and went to Calvin College. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, the, my young life was very much within that whole kind of sub, uh, culture there. Um, and so when I, when I got out of, uh, that and, and attended graduate school, um, and we were dealing in classes with uh, issues around religion and, you know, especially early American religion and, and all this stuff about, you know, predestination and election and uh, <laughs> convenient grace and, you know, all these things started coming up. Uh, everybody else was scratching their head and, oh, I know what this, what this means. So, so it seemed to me that, um, you know, I could help maybe explain the, the Puritans um, to my peers uh, in a sympathetic kind of way. Um, and that, that has kind of happened. So uh, I first actually read Edwards at Calvin College under George Marsden oh, wow. in his Intellectual History of the United States course. Um, and then uh, went to the University of Connecticut to study with Harry Stow, whose writings I had um, read and really enjoyed. And while there, I um, uh, became more interested in Edwards. He became more interested in seeing me doing something about Edwards, um, <laughs> especially as he was being brought into the Edwards project here at Yale. And, um, and so he uh, encouraged me to work on uh, some aspect of Edwards. I actually came at Jonathan through his father, Timothy. Oh. I was very interested in kind of the late 17th, early 18th century. And um, uh, so I ended up doing this kind of multi-generational um, family study of the Edwardses, much like, um, you know, uh, Middlecoff's study of the Mathers or Nagel on the Adams family and so on and so forth. That was a very big thing at that time. This was the early, this was the mid eighties um, just to kind of contextualize myself. Yeah. And so that's, that's where it happened. And then when Skip, Professor Stout, Skip Stout came to Yale to teach, um, he became the general editor and, and kind of pulled me along with him, oh, Ken, come on, we've got a position for you. Um, and I became involved in, in that as an associate editor and I've been kind of working my way through and, and uh, lo and behold, it became um, a life's work. It became a vocation. So <laughs> that's my faithful narrative. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> so what was, uh, was some of the appeal then that, uh, as, as Dr. Stout has said in class, Edwards tried to out Calvin Calvin? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, given the particular challenges of his time when you have the beginnings of, of you know, so humanist thought and influences and, and um, you know, enlightenment 
uh, rationalism and things like this, and the threat being uh, to kind of separate God more and more from reality, from nature, from human life. Edwards tried to go the other way. Yeah. So, you know, how can we actually keep God um, not only intimately involved, but you know, really integral to everything the you know the very building blocks of of matter uh yeah. so forth and and so uh what you have is um, a way of thinking and believing that kind of puts everything into the hands as it were to to use that very edwardsian metaphor puts everything into the hands of a very intimate god who uh, upon whom all creation and all humanity uh, are utterly, utterly reliant, um, but utterly reliant in some incredibly kind of like beautiful ways. You know, they're not scary ways um, that we're so used to hearing about when we think about Edwards and sinners and angry gods and all this kind of stuff and fire and brimstone. Um, but rather this illustrates and highlights the, for Ed, how Edwards really focuses on the nature of the beautiful mm -hmm. um, and the, um, you know, the, the, the warmth and the uh, intensity of God's relation with mm -hmm. reality and with us as well. And so um, there's a lot, a lot there to kind of, contend with and to to take in when you start really looking into Edwards in any kind of um, intense way so right because that would be you know I feel like most people do know Edwards for his sermon sinners in the hands of an angry God pulling it perhaps out of the context in which it was given um, but that comes largely to the extent that many don't understand his greater significance and value um, so how would you, I guess, playing off that last response, uh, how would you talk to someone about, you know, why the study of the life and works of Edwards is important today? Well, of course, Edwards is not only um, an important figure in American uh, history, intellectual history, religious history, and so forth, but, you know, he really belongs to the Christian canon um, he's a major figure in the pantheon of uh, Christian thinkers, going back to Augustine and Aquinas and, and you know, Calvin, Luther, and right on through. So, um, you know, that he, for that, just for that reason, <laughs> it's, he's really important. Um, he's considered one of the most, if not the most important metaphysician between um, Spinoza and Leibniz. Um, hmm. He's uh, um, incredibly influential on um, his, his contemporary scene, but also for centuries um, thereafter. Uh, he's, he actually, um, though not kind of deliberately in the sense of trying to create a denomination or a school, um, you know, he influences the creation of the first indigenous kind of school of American theology, the new divinity. Um, and then, of course, you know, his legacy today is, is seen in very profound ways on a global scale. Um, it's really quite remarkable how in the last you know, couple of generations, his, um, his reputation has spread um, and spread to a number of different areas of the world. And... Um, to communities of many, many diverse backgrounds and interests uh, in, within the Christian tradition and, and otherwise, um, as illustrated, for example, by the many affiliate centers that we've established and with which we, we work. Um, and you know, each one having kind of their own particular uh, interest or area of focus in, in Edwards' studies um, that 
you know, reflects the priorities and the needs and the interests of their, their region of the world. So that, so the appropriation of Edwards, the way Edwards is used and interpreted uh, in other places of the world can be quite different from the ways that uh, we might think about him here as, you know, an American um, <laughs> theologian and, you know, all of that stuff. Uh, they might, they might uh, people in Africa or in Asia or South America may, may look at him for very different kinds of reasons. And that's an interesting thing to have to try to balance, but, but, you know, we're here to really try to encourage um, that kind of engagement with Edwards, that creative, that creative kind of engagement. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about the encyclopedia itself. Um, this Edwards encyclopedia project is quite massive, involving 175 contributors. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about how the project got started and what the editorial task of pulling together all these contributors was like? Yeah. Um, that kind of follows from all the work being done in the affiliate centers and the relationships we've built with a lot of people around the world um, who uh, follow what we do, follow what the affiliate centers do, um, or are just, you know, kind of Edwards enthusiasts. Um, around, oh, let me think, half dozen years or so ago, uh, we had noticed how there were a lot of reference-like works on Edwards that were coming out um, and that were being well received, uh, bibliographies, um, kind of synopses of his thought and, and so on. And, um, we thought, oh, you know, an encyclopedia would be a good idea. We had seen encyclopedias of other major figures and looked around and, and we were aware of Erdman's, um, work uh, in this in promoting this particular, um, this particular genre. Hmm. So we proposed it to them and they said, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And the way we went about this was to make this actually a community sourcing project via our online presence. So um, you've heard of crowdsourcing um, as means of maybe transcribing sets of documents and things like this. You make, you put it online, you make it available. And, and invite people to come along and, hey, you want to transcribe these original documents? Well, uh, the way we did it was we set up a uh, closed kind of environment online in which people could um, register to volunteer. They could sign up for articles. They could submit their um, contributions. We could send back um, the uh, uh, re suggested revisions, and then they could sent back for final revision and so on. So um, through that, as you said, we had close to 200 uh, people contributing, I think from around 15 countries or something like that. Wow. Um, so the response was really great. Um, and, you know, and indeed the problem I think became one of trying to keep the volume a manageable size. Um, and so I think there are some 400 uh, articles in in the encyclopedia but we we are the first to acknowledge that we didn't we you know you just can't possibly cover every topic and that there are other other things and hopefully if we come up with a revision a revised edition or if we go online with it we'll be able to include some things and we've already got a list of of suggested topics from a number of different um, past and would-be contributors, so um, we'll see what happens. I'm trying to get Erdman's to um, to now do an online version, of, you know, of the encyclopedia, so that we can do precisely these kinds of things. We'll see. <laughs> oh, interesting. So, um, in the preface, you kind of noted noted that that online aspect played a major factor into the continued development of the encyclopedia. Yeah. Um, in what way then can readers and scholars play an active role in the continued progress of this text through an online medium? Um, they can contact me here at the center 
and and give uh, some suggestions about other articles that might like to be they they might like to write or you know if they don't want to actually do the writing they say well you know here's here's an, here's a subject you should probably have in there or here's a here's a figure um, or a location or something like that you know we try to cover a number of different things not just kind of the formal thought but um, you know biographical pieces of individuals who were uh, in Edwards's life and important locations and so forth. Um, so uh, uh, that would be uh, most welcome uh, for, uh, for us uh, so that we could get some ideas of what, uh, what we missed and uh, more importantly, what people would actually want to see uh, uh, in the, in the collection. Fantastic. Yeah. And even in, within the idea of having this encyclopedia about a person. <laughs> and that's very interesting. I, I think uh, Selderhuis has one about Calvin, um, but it certainly is, is a distinguishing, you know, mark of Edwards's influence. Uh, I'm wondering, um, um, what do you think uh, Edwards would think about this <laughs> um, and what are some of the distinguishing features and challenges of, of this approach? Yeah. Well, um, of course in Edwards's day an encyclopedia was supposed to comprehend all knowledge. Yeah. And so I think he would, uh, the idea of, of um, there being an encyclopedia about him, he would say, well, that's, that's not the purpose of an encyclopedia. Uh, you know, you're supposed to, you know, uh, it's supposed to be a compendium. And right. uh, I guess we'd have to say, well, it's, it's an attempt to be a compendium of you. <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, he would probably feel kind of abashed about that. But um, <laughs> he'd write a few more resolutions about, he'd write a few more pride. resolutions about, pride. about pride. And, yeah. right. but, um, <laughs> No, seriously, it's obviously that that Edwards is deserving of a of a resource like this because of the just the great range of of work that's been done on him, and you know he's he's like I think he's the most written about figure in pre-revolutionary American history. Wow. At this point. Um, and so the range of that, just the, the, the small mountain of material that's amassed, but also then, the, as I say, the range of interpretation of disciplines and approaches that are represented, um, hmm. that, that keeps multiplying, it seems, or uh, if not, rising geometrically. And so an attempt to provide something of a, uh, a focal point for all of these different topics uh, seem something that could serve, could, could, you know, serve people well um, as a place to try to begin to um, uh, understand Edwards. If they have a particular topic, they want to, you know, zero in on an entry um, or uh, related topics or just kind of start reading um, uh, kind of a scattershot kind of way and see what um, what might catch their eye in terms of their interest. So uh, that's one thing that we tried to do. And another thing that's important to mention is that when you have a figure like Edwards, he's going to, um, he's going to attract a lot of different types of interpretation. Mm -hmm. um, and our goal here was not to present a inter an interpretation, you know, this is the right way to view it. Um, this, by the way, is the approach that the Yale edition of Edwards's works took. Um, it didn't try to impose one interpretive uh, schema on Edwards in terms of his significance. So the, uh, early on, the, the editors recognized the, the, the diversity of approaches um, and uh, um, to Edwards, and they allowed those to stand in the introductions to the text. Same way with the encyclopedia, we allow um, differing interpretations to stand side by side, and we, as a way of alerting the reader that, hey, these are here, 
And, you know, it's, it's kind of up to you to decide where you want to come down on this. And, and if you can't decide just from reading the entry, you know, you can follow up with other reading on this particular topic, which we provide, you know, and you can get more immersed in, in the, um, in that particular issue and that particular interpretive uh, struggle. And, um, and then you can become a full fledged Edwardsian junkie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> right and soon you'll be wearing edwards t-shirts and drinking from edwards mugs and things <laughs> like that <laughs> well there's certainly nothing wrong with that uh, i hope not i hope not <laughs> um yeah i thought it was very interesting you have uh the whole range of uh, edwardsian perspectives in here you've got some articles i think by stephen holmes and who's being the more you know british school and then you have Oliver Crisp writing, and you authored some uh, some articles yourself. Um, and that didn't that variety of different perspectives and thoughts uh, that didn't present any problem. You're saying for the cohesion of the encyclopedia? No, it really it really doesn't. If anything, it enriches it because of the um, you know, we try to be an open forum for uh, people's passions about about Edwards and related topics. Yeah. You know, and so the, what I've always tried to do is to encourage people in those particular passions, uh, maybe maybe directing them a little bit, you know, and saying, well, okay, you may want to think about this, you may want to think about that. Um, but, you know, that ultimately that the goal here is to encourage engagement and dialogue uh, and research in, in Edwards and topics related to his life and legacy. Some some fiery debates in the upcoming Edwards conference in October, maybe to be had. Yeah, we yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> we're having uh, here at Yale. We're having in uh, October two to four. We're having um, a conference entitled Yale and the International Jonathan Edwards. Uh, we'll have uh, representatives of all twelve of our affiliate centers here. We'll have um, some special uh, scholars, including um, George Marston, who I mentioned, and Mark Knoll, who I imagine many of your, um, your viewers will, will uh, recognize as well. And then also Rick Warren uh, of the Saddleback Church, who, as it turns out, he too is a an Edwardsian <laughs> uh, fan. So, a really fan of Edwards. So, you know, who knew? Uh, so um, we're going to, uh, I think, have a, have a wonderful and um, engaging time. Yeah, it sounds like a blast. Hope you can uh, join us. Yeah, I might have to. Um, so you authored several articles in this volume. Uh, is there one that stands out to you that was particularly fun or interesting to write and why? <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember. I'm, I, I remember most of all that I ended up writing an awful lot of the biographical pieces. <laughs> I, think, I think because at the end of the, the whole process, those were the ones that were kind of sitting there waiting to be done. And I'm, we kept putting out calls, well, please do a, a biographical piece, please do. And nobody would like do them. And so I ended up uh, actually doing And those were actually a lot of fun to do because, um, you know, I had mentioned my work at the Edwards, with the Edwards family. And so a lot of these people I had kind of, I, I had known uh, quite well. And so uh, this gave me an opportunity to uh, give some more information on these individuals um, and um, uh, to kind of connect them uh, as well. And so, I hope that you know people will take more of an interest in some of these. Um, some of them are rather colorful figures too uh, that um, populated Edwards's life and influenced him um, quite a bit. So that that that's what stands out the most for me right now. So I know I did some others in there, but we actually kind of approached. Uh, uh, major scholars to do uh, uh, longer pieces on selected major topics 
uh, that perhaps was the one exception to the kind of the broadcast invitation just to kind of ground the volume uh, with these longer pieces on major aspects of Edwards' thought. Given that, uh, were there any other kind of points of interest in the volume that you thought were particularly fascinating contributions? Yeah. Um, there are several, I mean, gosh, there's, there are so many things, but um, <laughs> I really liked uh, some of the work that was done on Edwards' own publications. Um, we would have, we tried to feature every one of them. I don't know if we quite got all of them, but we got most of them anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, that would obviously be something we'd also want to complete uh, in a yeah. revised edition. Um, but, uh, um, uh, so pieces on Edwards' own writings, but then uh, I think assessments of his, you know, notions of affections. Um, there's some really good stuff in there, and I think newer stuff on things like psycholog psychology, psychological thought, hmm. um, which is kind of a, a relatively uh, newer, newer um, uh, kind of uh, area of exploration. Um, so you know, the, you're, you're all over the, you're all over the place in, in terms of Edwards' thought and, and new approaches, I think. Great. More broadly speaking, what is on the horizon for the Edwards Center, apart from, of course, the conference? Um, so we are continuing to, uh, um, engage in our uh, global sermon editing project which is another community sourcing thing where we invite uh, volunteers to train uh, and then uh, become editors of Edwards's sermons. Um, and so if anybody's interested in that, certainly, again, they can contact me here at the Edwards uh, Center and do that. We're always looking for interested individuals uh, for that. Um, we are, um, engaged in trying to uh, bring in uh, new sources. We have um, new resources all the time, um, and that's to serve our visiting researchers. Uh, we have a reading room here that um, uh, we welcome uh, students and, and researchers from outside of, outside of Yale to come and uh, uh, take advantage of what we have here, which includes a, a, a major library, um, article database, um, uh, uh, the digital transcripts of many, many uh, Edwards writings that are not available online right now, hmm. um, and, and other, uh, other resources that uh, we can make, make available. And, um, you know, and I'm always happy to, um, give my two cents to anybody's project as well if they, if they want to hear about it. So, um, but, but no, but seriously, I can help to can help to direct them to certain sources and, mm -hmm. um, and help them uh, use their time, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, in the best way uh, possible. So yeah, come by and, and, and see us. It's perfect. I'll, I'll have to hit you up on that. Yeah. Uh, there you go. There you go. So uh, one last question, um, what are some of the, just kind of forecasting a little bit, what are some of the challenges that you see uh, in Edwards' scholarship moving forward into the future? Yeah, um, well, there are any number of areas, I think, that, that people will be um, looking at. Right now, there's a lot of work uh, being done in Edwards on areas like such participation uh, in communion with God mm -hmm. um, and then relatedly you know, theosis and divinization and um, uh, even the beatific vision in Edwards. So um, it, it's kind of um, it's like an uh, Eastern Orthodox kind of uh, approach to Edwards or trying to reconcile um, those two, uh, the, the Eastern and the Western traditions in, in Edwards. Um, 
I'd like to see more work in Edwards as a missionary, especially related to uh, Native American uh, studies that are going on so so nicely right now. But uh, there's a lot too going on with um, Edwards and in terms of Native American studies and negotiation um, and Native American Christianities and what role he played in that. Um, and that, of course, all relates to, to the larger uh, or at least related issue of, of missions, Christian missions history. Um, so, yeah, those are just a, a couple, so one, one more theological, one more sort of social history, if you will, um, where we might, might encourage uh, folks to get in, involved in, in the study of Edwards. But there are certainly others. And I'm getting, you know, new things all every day, it seems. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, um, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview, Dr. Minkema. You're very welcome. Thank you for, thank you for having me.